What's going on guys, Victor here. Today we're doing something I haven't done in a very long time, but something that I love to do and show you guys, and that is go after the invasive bullseye snakehead. So I got my buddy Ryan right back there. Say what's up, Ryan. What's up guys? You guys will see him a lot in this video, but we're basically gonna be walking up and down canals in South Florida, looking for these invasive snakeheads. Get you on the head cam, let's get some fish. So you're going to ICAST for all the days, right? Um, I haven't decided yet. I would do it. Yeah, you think so? I would definitely do Wednesday and Thursday. Friday's irrelevant. Okay. There it is. Got him on? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, guys, there's the first fish, but oh, it's a snakey. A little snakey snake. Little snake. A little slithery snake. Hey, man, target species here, acquired. Woo! Look at that guy. First snakehead. Me and Ryan haven't done this in years. You know what's I, funny though? Because I, I, I saw a guy the other day that I knew and he's like, I saw you on YouTube snakehead fishing. Can you tell me anything about it? I'm like, dude, I haven't been in like six years. I couldn't tell you at anything. At least choked it down. Yeah. Those hooks are down the yes. hatch. So, so these, the frog's out of the mouth, but he actually choked that thing. So these fish are super slimy. And when you guys saw on the head cam, I kind of hesitate always to set the hook. Because although they do have a pretty big mouth, you want to let them eat it. These fish are not something that hit it real fast and swallow it. You got to kind of let them munch on it, wait a second or two, and then you hit them. This is one of my favorite things to do. We were just catching rooster fish in Panama, and I might be crazy for saying this, but I have just as much fun doing something like this on the side of the road. When we say this guy choked it, what I mean is those hooks are way down there. And normally, I would never bring pliers snakehead fishing, but it's a good thing we did today. <laughs> Take a look in there. Point the camera in there. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude, that's that's about as deep as it goes. So check this out. We're gonna let the snake head go. This is an invasive fish, but I got a whole spiel to tell you guys in, a, in like two or three minutes about why I'm letting this thing go. I'm not transporting it, I'm letting it go in the same body of water in which I caught it. And those things are very, very hardy. Yeah, so, you can't you can't kill them if you want to. <laughs> no. So check this out. We are fishing what's known as a hollow body frog. This is a frog made by Live Target. I'll have it linked below for you guys. And the way this not thing not even sponsored, just you just like the lure. Love them. They're good. Oh, I feel like you're about to hook yourself. I know. Okay. Sketch. So the cool thing about this is, watch. We got the double hooks to make sure you you get them. But this, unlike your traditional frog where you'd have to hook with a hook and um, you know it makes a lot more commotion on the water, this guy's nice because look, a snakehead or a bass comes down and this is soft. So as soon as he does that, those hooks get him, those double fangs, and this is something you can fish over and over and over again. Vice is a soft plastic that you're gonna have to change because it'll get cut in half or the legs will get fouled up. Real good frog right here and I actually have it tied straight to my braid. In Florida, we can get away with that. Our water's pretty, I don't know if you'd call it tantric. Tannic. Tannic. Our, our water is very muddy, so I don't think the leader really matters. And um, when you're casting around all this like heavy brush and cover and grass and lily pads, you want something that cuts through that. Vice's mono will tend to get hung up on it and it's just too much stretch. So let's give it another cast, see if we get another snake on the bank. Oh, dude! That was sick. Oh, oh yeah? Alright, guys. Hook thing, that man. was a textbook snakehead bite right there. The yep. Straight out of the bank. Straight out of the bank. And this is why I like that 50 pound braid. Woo! Yeah, man. Let's go. That's a good one. Nice, dude. As they say in the UK, that's a proper one. Proper? Proper. Proper bite. Proper snake. Beautiful fish. I really like these fish when you first catch them because they have that real orange and white belly, as you guys can see there. They got all these kind of like false looking eyes on them. And if you look on the tail right there, that's what makes it the bullseye snake head. It looks like it's got a bullseye on his tail. Just a really, really cool fish we have here in Florida. Even though they're invasive, you know, some people really hate them. Some people like them. 
I'm neutral on them. You know, I like to eat them. We're going to harvest this guy for dinner. And I also like to catch them. The first one you guys saw me, I actually released because he was a little bit small. And I'm not about killing things for the sake of killing them. They're here. You're not going to stop them. It's more of a management issue now than anything. But this guy, since he does have a decent amount of meat on him, I am going to harvest him for the dinner table. But check that out. You guys can see why they're called a snakehead too. And I got to do it every single video. Listen to this. They got the hardest head of any fish, kind of like a cobia for all my saltwater guys. Right, Ryan? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you Just break a... your hand, break your knife on that. <laughs> yep. And look at how perfectly set up these guys are to ambush prey. Here, let's flip. You see his eyeballs are right there on the top of his head. This guy will sit on the bank. And, you know, we're fishing fake frogs, but that's one of their main forges. Just like a bass, they wait for frogs to hop into the water and swim at night. You guys are highly nocturnal, and they'll pop a frog. It's probably one of their favorite meals. So if you guys are like me and you spend a lot of time outdoors, but you still want the necessities of life, which everyone has electronics these days, this guy is a real game changer. And that is where today's video sponsor comes in, Anchor. A lot of times in between trips, I don't have time to plug things in or charge them at home. And that's why I've been leaving this guy in my truck. So I can charge my drone batteries, my cell phone, my GoPro batteries, all my camera batteries, basically with this guy right here. This power bank is super useful if you guys spend a lot of time camping, anything off the grid, or you just wanna be able to have a power source with you. Or if you guys are from Florida, like I am, I know hurricane season's coming up and this is a really nifty little power bank. It's not gonna get you through an entire hurricane, but it's definitely gonna get you by to charge your basic electronic devices. This power bank has the most advanced, long-lasting batteries with over 3,000 charge cycles. It also comes with a five-year guarantee, and this guy is fast. You can recharge this thing from zero to 80% in just one hour. The power bank also has 1,500 watts of output power. So if this power bank seems a little bit too big for you, they have a ton of other options in a smaller range. Another thing I really like about this thing, it's got every single outlet and socket you can imagine. You got a car charger right there. You got your USB plugs right here. So I can charge my GoPros, my phone. I got my drone batteries. You even got AC power. So you could charge small appliances. It's got a really nice LCD display right here. It lets you know exactly how much juice you got left. And over the last few weeks of using it, I can just tell you it's just a durable feeling piece of equipment. If you guys are interested in the Anchor 757 power bank, I'm gonna have a link in the description box below. Big thank you once again to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. I love working with companies like this because they support the channel and anyone who wants to support the channel, supporting you guys because I can create better content for you, keep making videos like this. Traditionally, when we're snakehead fishing, what we found over the years, skinny water, not a lot of moving water, overhanging trees. And here, in this spot right here, we have all three of those things. So the overhanging trees hanging in the water creates like an ambush point for these guys. And they already like the fact that it's skinny so they can ambush their prey. And there's no moving water. They like to hide away from that. So this is like ideally what we're looking for. You find places that look good all the time and they're not always good, um, but this is what we want. And uh, obviously it's working because Vic just popped the stud right there. And you guys can find Ryan's channel linked below. Type in Ryan Mori on YouTube. Uh, we just did a trip together, caught some rooster fish in Panama, and now we are here. We are on the side of the road catching <laughs> snakes together. But yeah, check out his channel. He's got a great channel. If you guys enjoy fishing, you'll like his channel. Like Ryan was saying, I've never really had much success in big bodies of water. I think snakeheads, I don't know if it's so much that the snakeheads don't like it or you just can't present your lure effectively. You guys see how skinny this canal is. If Ryan casts his frog straight down the middle of the canal, snakehead can see it from both sides. If you're casting down the big body of water, the chances of them seeing your lure are slim. So I think that's what is really important for this type of fishery. But you guys see, this canal is maybe three feet deep at most. It's it's real skinny. Go oh, right there. He didn't get you. No. Go ahead. Go for it. Still there. I can, I couldn't even see my frog anymore. Dude, I got. There we go. Got him, Ryan. Got him. I just watched a, walked a whole stretch while Vic went to back to get the truck. Didn't see one snakehead. As soon as Vic pulls up with this truck, I spook one. Vic takes two casts, gets hit. Fish doesn't get it. Then I catch my first one of the day, which is not a bad one at all. Well, Ryan just got himself a snakehead. Good job, bro. Thanks, man. On the board. That's I'm one for two. You're two for three. We're not doing bad.
All right, so this is the last stretch of this canal we're gonna fish. You guys see, we fish some super skinny stuff. It's totally worth checking out because Ryan just caught his fish in a little canal like this. Um, don't have any ice on the snakehead right now, so probably gonna run to gas station, get some ice on them, and then we'll continue on to the Rapid next canal. All right, so we just put the drone up in the air, and I always like to show you guys this part of the video because you can kind of get, you know, an aerial view to really see what we're doing. And I know a number one question on this video is going to be, why did you release snakeheads? But number two is spots. People are always asking for snakehead spots. And I tell them they're everywhere, which is true. If you guys want to catch snakeheads, look for three things. Skinny canals, places you think that people don't fish a lot, and stagnant water. Water that's not moving. Ryan and I will drive up and down the road, you know, this day and age, you can download an app like Google Earth or Google Maps, and you can just go look all around South Florida. There's so much opportunity to fish in South Florida. Most of South Florida's canal systems are connected in one way or another. So underground, fish can travel through the pipes, and that's how a lot of these fish spread throughout South Florida, because we just have such an interconnected system of canals and just bodies of water. We didn't, we literally th didn't think this whole stretch looked good, but I hear, in my ear, I hear a little boop, and I was like, hmm. Something looks interesting over there. One cast, my biggest snake of the day. Whoa, that's buddy. Stud, dude. Yeah, that's a nice one. That might be the biggest one of the day, or at least as close to yours. I think he's really clean looking too. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful animals, man. Look at that beautiful orange. Like when they have that white belly orange and then the red eye, they are very, very interesting fish. Super, super cool. Very unique to South Florida. This is a very Florida man <laughs> type of thing to do. And Vic showed you guys in his video, but I'll show you guys here. Rock hard head like a freaking cobia. Very, very unique fish. On the side of the road, roadside fishing. Me getting destroyed by ants right now. Oh my God, that one bit me good. sitting in an ant pile? Uh, dude, I think I've literally just been traveling ants up and down the side of the road. I've just been carrying them in my shoes, but it's a nice one. That's a fish. Oh, oh. <gasps> Snakehead on! <laughs> I literally called that. I was like, that's a fish. <laughs> it's like the wake was what, five feet away and oh, he just yeah. came up on it? Was that your GoPro? Yeah, baby. This, sna this, this canal the looks good. One of the trip. See, even for a fish this size, they just make such an aggressive thump. Oh, yeah. So there's pretty slow for a while. Ryan caught the last fish at the last spot. Look at this slimy little guy. Woo! Yep. So you guys check this out. This right here. If I could say textbook snakehead territory, no current, no moving water, a bunch of overgrown stuff for them to hide in, and very skinny canal. So I cast it and that snake had actually looked like he came from the middle of the canal and attacked my frog right over there this just looks super it just looks like a really good ambush environment for these snakeheads to live in that's a good one dude that's sick i, I think was, i had completely given up on this body of water oh you're oh. in the weeds you're in the weeds i think this is a good one get them oh. oh it's a good one dude it's not a bad one to end the day with oh no i'm like in the lily pads that's why you got to fish braid. that yep heavy braid in the sand. Oh, car's gonna run him over. I could get the hooks out if I had a pair of pliers, but it's just like you don't you worry about these fish shaking and then you don't want to get the hook in you. Their teeth are really not that bad. I'm not gonna say I voluntarily want to stick my fingers in there, but if I have to, I will. Their teeth are kind of like I don't know, like a yellowtail snapper's teeth. See that? Dude, he's way down in the hatch there. You don't have pliers on you, do you? Oh. Kind of Danko sponsorship, am I? Literally, you're wearing <laughs> you're wearing plier t-shirts and a plier hat. I mean, he's not gonna live. Nope. <laughs> I guess he's coming home for dinner. I just popped his gills because that hook is. Mm. Imagine two fangs in the back of your throat. You're not living. Oh. He says otherwise. He says, "Let me go. <laughs> I'll prove you wrong." <laughs> oh. You need me to cut the line? Yeah. All right.
Said I was gonna let you go, Mr. Snakehead, but the Hulks had another thing in mind. You just ate this way too good. <laughs> so we got two snakeheads for dinner right here. Excellent. So I think we agreed on something. Huh. Today. Lures. What kind of lures do you start with? Slow pitch. Yes! Oh my dude, gosh! What is going on I couldn't I couldn't get a good hook set, dude. I hooked into the, the tree. That was sick though. That was yep. like the iconic snakehead. Like right? you watch it come off the bank. Are you filming? Yep. That was iconic. Two in a row to end the night. So that snakehead was right on the bank. We work our frogs just like Ryan casted, perfect cast, like two, three feet off the bank. And you want these long casts because they're pretty sensitive to pressure. Oh, there was another one on you, huh? Yeah, I don't know if that was a snake though. So they're pretty sensitive to pressure. You will spook them. Like you're never going to see them right there generally because they're going to spook. Long casts along the bank is the key for these guys. But I just hooked into the tree. And so this, you guys see all that slime dripping off of him? That's after hosing this guy off numerous, numerous times. They're really muddy, just slimy fish. I'm gonna be using a seven inch Dextreme flexible fillet because these guys got some pretty gnarly scales. And you guys see this side has the serrated edge as well as your traditional edge. Perfect knife for big scaly fish like this. So I'm gonna use that back of that blade to get through the scales. Kind of an awkward fish to flay because they kind of roll like that. So I'm going to use this same side, the serrated edge to get through those scales. So these fish, like I said earlier in the video, they're invasive. So they're not meant to be here. You guys saw that I did release a few snakeheads in this video. And the reason I do that is in Florida, by law, you are allowed to release them in the same body of water in which you caught them. So it's illegal for me to catch this fish, bring it to another canal, and introduce it into a different body of water. Because then you're essentially aiding in the problem of them uh, increasing their range of where they're supposed to be. Check that out. Look at how white that meat is right there. You shouldn't be introducing them into new bodies of water. They're gonna do it themselves. I think that these fish are just gonna continue to flourish in South Florida. I mean, like I told you in the video, where we were fishing for them was pretty far north of where we normally catch them. So it goes to show you that just on their own, they are, you know, flourishing and they're, they're making their way north. So it's much more of a management issue now than anything than trying to stop them all together. Look at that. Gorgeous fish. They have a really good yield for a fish. When we talk about yield, I'm talking about how much is left on the carcass after the fillets are gone. It's a very good yield. And listen to this one more time. That hard, hard head of theirs. Now let's skin them out using the exact same knife. Also a good knife for skinning. You just gotta be observant of the fact that you do have an it, an edge on the back side of the blade. Just like that, look at that. Almost no bloodline on these guys. If you've never eaten snakehead, I'm telling you, you're sleeping on a really good, good fish. The environment in which they live doesn't look very appetizing, but I'll tell you right now, after eating these at least a dozen times, great, great fish. So I'm just gonna make a delicious little lunch for Brookie and I. There's the snakehead. And like I said earlier, such an overlooked fish we have here in Florida. Take one last look at that bloodline or lack thereof. You see that? That bloodline is usually what's in a fish that makes it kind of foul or real oily. This fish is very mild flaky, but also firm to work with. So we're gonna do real basic seasoning. Cardamom. This is a super aromatic spice. It's really fresh. It's got like a citrusy, lemony um, flavor to it. I really like working with it. So cardamom, something earthy, garlic powder. You guys know Vic loves his garlic powder. 
and then salt and pepper. I mean, just looking at it right here on the cutting board, it's crazy to think that this came out of a three foot, eight, three foot by eight foot canal on the side of the road that you would never think that a fish that looks that good would come out of the side of the road canal, you know? These are a super, well, these are a delicacy in South Asia in which they originated. I know they catch them in Thailand. I believe they also catch them in Vietnam. Very popular fish over there. And here we just got some stir fry veg. We got scallion, green pepper, yellow pepper, and a little bit of carrot. And we're gonna start with our stir fry vegetables right here. I'm going in the pan with actually no oil because I want them to char up a little bit. So I'm just gonna char them for like two or three minutes. You guys see this right here? That's what you want. Just get that smoky charred flavor in there. Okay, now we're going with some sesame oil. Non-stick pan, gonna put in some oil. Now we go in with our fish. You can immediately smell that cardamom just wakes up in that oil. It smells so good. Florida lobster mini season is right around the corner. My fiance Brookie behind the camera, who also has her own YouTube channel, actually hand makes these right here. This is a lobster net and a tickle stick. She puts her heart and soul into these things and they work amazing. If you guys have ever seen us catch lobster on the channel, mine or hers, you guys know, these are the only lobster nets we use and we've been using them for the last, she's been using them for like the last 20 years, her and her family. Hand makes these, if you guys are looking for lobster stuff for this season, check them out, link below or at floridalobsternets.com. We're doing a light pan fry right here. I'm gonna add a little bit of soy. As well as this stuff right here. This is delicious. This is chili garlic. Let me do about a tablespoon of this stuff right here. Serve this with a little jasmine rice, which I toasted a little bit, as you guys see. There's some brown bits in there. And then we got our snake head. Don't break it. Tell you what, it's flaky as can be. Mm -hmm. First thing I taste is cardamom. Mm -hmm. This is such an undervalued and underappreciated fish, is all I'm gonna say. I really like that seasoning. You do, right? Mm -hmm. It's very like, Refreshing. Yeah, I was gonna say that, but it seems weird to say with fish, to have fish be refreshing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't overpower it, it's just like real refreshing. It's not very heavy, you know? Mm. I didn't see where you guys fished, but where you usually catch snakeheads, it always like, kind of like turns your nose up towards how you're gonna feel towards eating the fish, cause it's just like, you're catching it in a canal. But this fish never tastes like you're catching it in a canal. It's very delicious. Very flaky, I like the way you cooked it. I love doing this. So that's what snakehead looks like all cooked up. And when we talk about the flakiness of a fish, what we're talking about is how easily is it gonna separate like that? If it's real fibrous or tough, it's not gonna separate easy. So people love flaky fish, I feel like. But this isn't mushy. 
Like when I think about something like a Yelltail Snapper, it's flaky but it's mushy. This is still firm but flaky. It's got like real fine uh, serrations in between the flake, which I really like. Always a pleasure to work with this fish. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys are interested in doing this, I highly recommend it. They taste good, they fight good. If you guys are in South Florida, have never tried snakehead or fishing for them, challenge yourself and do it because it's a lot of fun. Big thank you to Anchor once again for sponsoring today's video, keeping us strapped and ready for many trips and keeping our batteries charged and getting us ready for the outdoors. And actually tomorrow I'm hopping on a plane. Unfortunately, Brookie's not coming, but I'm going back out west and gonna go get on some white sea bass and halibut with the fin fetish guys, Brian Norris. So really looking forward to that, sharing that experience with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.